All right, I'm back with another Studebaker update. You see I have the truck torn apart. Before I get too into it, can you comment on the video, ask a question, like, and subscribe? Uh, I'm trying to build the channel up, and that really helps. But right now, I ordered a bunch of parts for it, and they're not in yet, but I'm just tearing the truck apart. I started yesterday, and uh, getting a little bit further today. Um, I took off the brakes and the spindle over here, and now I am pulling the spring out. I'm cutting half a coil out. A half a coil should be about an inch, and then I ordered two inch drop spindles. They should be here in two days. Um, so as you give me a three inch drop in the front, I already did a four inch drop on the rear. And let me show you what's going on. I have an, uh, I have an explosion of tools and pretty sketchy spring. It's like a bomb. Uh, right. So, Here's the upper control arm, the lower, the upper and the lower. Um, this was a pain he has to come out. Once I took the, the ball joints off and the spindle came out, that's what's getting replaced. This spindle where the hub mounts to is actually going to be raised two inches with the two inch drop spindles. Uh, I have the other side torn apart, but the spindle's still in. Um, so the spring didn't want to come out, so I have spring compressor. And I compress the spring. Well, first, it wasn't getting low enough, so I had to take the sway bar and link out. And then I compress the spring with the tool. But the tool was causing the I only get one tool, one, uh, one of the, they come in a set. So I only can get the one on, and what it did was it cocked the spring in there. So what I did was I put some zip ties on there, a bunch of them. And that's holding the spring, some tension on it. it that just gave me just enough to get the spring in and out. Um... So I had to take the tool out, and then I was able to push down the control arm and pull the spring out this way, and the spring fell right out. So, the spindles are coming, and you always want to cut out of the top of it. So right now I'm going to take off this much of the coil. So right now I'm going to grab my angle grinder and just zip that off, and I'm going to throw it back in there. I put a jack stand underneath the con lower control arm or I'll put the sway bar back in and uh, that should hold it and then we'll continue when I I'll do the other side and then we'll continue from there when I get the rest of the parts in. All right, I made a mark. Um, if we went flat here, I feel like I was being greedy. They say half coil is good for an inch on a V6 truck. This has a V8 in it and I'm not sure about the body if it's heavier or not, but what I did was just lined it up. And I'm going from the edge there, I'm just leaving a little bit there. That seems more like half a coil to me than that. That just seems a little greedy. Okay, quick update before my phone dies here. Um, I took the spring compressors, compressed the spring as far as I could and uh, it was blowing the zip ties apart. So I took a bunch of bailing wire and tied it tight around there. That got the spring short enough that I could slip it in there, put a jack under the control arm, push it up. And now I have a, a nut on the sway bar that should keep it from popping out. And I'm about to cut these uh, bailing wire. See how much tension's on it. I'm gonna add some tension on it. Okay, I got the sway bar tight. All the bailing wire cut off the spring, and I got a jack stand underneath the control arm. I'm off to do the other side. Get all this bailing wire. Stuff's always useful. Uh, here's the old spindle. And this is how far I am on the other side. So basically, it's a 22 millimeter nut and a 24 in the bottom for the ball joint after you pull the cotter pin. This one I think's a 19. And then uh, get the brakes off on an S10. Apparently it takes these stupid Allen heads. And then there's the hub. It works like an old trailer. You just stick a nut and a cotter pin on there. It's pretty easy slash stupid setup. On top of uh, ordering the drop spindles, I also got 
an electric fan that's coming too. Uh, I think I'm gonna build a little shroud for it. So maybe if I get bored of doing this, we're gonna have stuff to do. I'll wire in the the new relay for the fan. I have one of those just so the fan will be plug and play. Uh, I'd like to get a sheet of aluminum and bend up a fan shroud for it, but it's really not needed for this truck. But so basically, I'd make like a a box that has four sides that goes over that the the radiator that sit between the you see this core so it sit like a half inch the sides would be on all around so here here that and then it would just suck all air out through it so the back of the shroud will come to the edge of this core and then the fan will have a big hole in the center of it where the fan will sit and they'll pull air through the back of it uh, I'm gonna mock up the fan first make sure I have enough room plus a half inch for the fan shroud maybe a little bit more just so there's some wiggle room and it's kind of tight in there between that and the water pump so that's in the plans I think it'd also be a good practice to you to make that fan shroud I'd have to go to a Harbor Freight and buy a, a jigsaw but I don't have a sheet metal brake so I'm using these uh, 2 by 2 square tube and I just clamp them together I have this old piece of sheet steel and I just hammered it over and I made a nice little bend. And then once that stuff's done, the fan and the drop spindles, I'd like to get it aligned. And then I'd also like to shorten the drive shaft a little bit. Um, I might order the oil pan gasket and do that too, just so we don't have any leaks. It has a slow drip somewhere. It's either the oil pan gasket or the rear main. And I really don't feel like pulling the tranny out to do the rear main. I should have just did it when I had the motor out, but I was being cheap. So now I paid the price for that. So do this stuff first and then try and get it on the road. And I don't want to drop the oil pan either. It's got fresh oil in it. It only has a couple miles on it. So maybe I'll go order that stuff, the oil pan gasket in the rear main, and do that in a separate video when it's ready for its first oil change because I don't want to waste that oil. So we had a big ass winter storm here and it's been two weeks since I tore the truck apart. And I finally, let me get this piece of Luan out of here. Got my spindles. See there's a spindle in there. So these are my drop spindles for the Studebaker. There's the other one in there. So I'm gonna work on setting this truck up. I got the old spindles out. Springs are cut one inch. Should, should be a one inch drop. So she gave me a three in the front. I already did the rear, which is a four. These are the old spindles. So I'm gonna work on setting that all up and trying to get the truck out of here. I got some other jobs to do and some other work coming up. So getting the Studebaker mobile again is gonna be a big step for that. All right, as you see, I got one side done. I'm working on the other, it's almost done. I got the drop spindle in on this side. So basically what I do is I gotta tighten the nut up for the spindle, put the cotter pin in and the brakes, and then put the wheel back on. And this side will be done. Then I could drop it down on the ground and see how low she sits. And that's basically the update for now on this old girl. I got the uh, sheet of aluminum for the fan shroud I'm gonna build got the jigsaw for it the fan I don't know if I showed that it's a uh, Mishimoto 16 inch and it's like 2000 CFM or something like that so that should work pretty good that was like 80 bucks uh, so once I do that build the fan shroud I got a new equipment this will be a video I got a MIG and spool gun set up Eastwood 175 so that's going to be a separate video up on the channel uh, I got a hood and I got me a plasma cutter this is awesome I'm super excited about it so we're going to get this truck done I'm back on the ground and then uh, hopefully it should be out here soon we got annihilated with some snow so I'm going to get on the ground do the fan shroud and then hopefully by the time I'm done with all that and everything's buttoned up hopefully the driveway will be cleared out and melted a little bit. Alright, I got the truck sitting back down on the ground. We're sitting pretty level now. It's hard to show you. I can't open the garage door. If I do, 
I have nowhere to put the sheet, but if I do, about three tons of snow is going to come in. We got a lot. I hate winter, but let's see if we can get a good view on it. So, shoot. Looks like we're sitting pretty low. I like the way it's sitting. Um, I wish I could pull outside to get a better view of it, but got nowhere to put this sheet and the snow is probably like waist high up against the door it's pretty ridiculous definitely need to get some wheel spacers on the front put these wheels out two inches maybe to match this uh, bigger axle that's in the back the forward axle makes it sit two inches wider I like the way that looks way better than how the front is and it'll give it a little bit more of an even looking stance Here's a little project I did. Um, the truck didn't have a serial number plate. I ordered this plate off of uh, eBay. and it, So I didn't have a serial plate. I have a good title and everything for the truck. And it, it's the one. It's the title for the truck. I got it from the right owner. Um, but they sell these VIN plates and then they, Harbor Freight has this punch set right here. The quarter inch punches. So I took that and I punched the, the VIN number in there and then just took uh, some rivets and riveted them into the truck. So that's all done. And uh, that's just one other thing to check off the list of things to do. And we're getting pretty close to being completely finished with this project. And then inside the cab of the truck, if it'll focus, I made a little bracket for the head unit. These are the bolts sticking up here for uh, the heater core and I knew it was gonna do this with the radio so I just made a uh, got some angle and then tech screwed it to the radio head unit itself and then just put a flat stock at the bottom and then drilled the holes in the right spots for the bolts that are going across for the heater core and now I just got to run the wires for that I tested this out it works uh, I'm gonna put these two six and a half inch speakers inside of ammo cans on either side of the seat. Um, I have them all wired up. I might throw, I have two of these, I might throw these on the opposite sides of the, the ammo can too, but I had the radio playing on my, uh, my toolbox and they sounded pretty decent. It's not gonna be an awesome sound system, it's gonna be a sound system. It sounds pretty decent for what it is. Uh, just so you're not going around the road humming to yourself. Just a little uh, sound system should be all right. Uh, two, three speakers should be plenty for this little truck. And, all right, I think I'm gonna wrap up this update on the truck and uh, this video. Um, as you can see, I'm done with the truck. It's on the ground. Uh, I got a mess. I got boxes everywhere. Uh, the floor's a mess from this project here. So I have to clean up the shop, put the welder that I just got, and everything's good. Got, yeah got to get the whole shop situated but if you can like comment and subscribe to this channel that'd be awesome and uh, thank you